Let's have a, uh, let me just talk about that right quick. <clears throat> you know what's crazy to me? Hold on. Let me switch this up. What's up, YouTube? You know what's crazy to me? Is that when we... You know how much of the population really makes up trans and drag queens or whatever? It's like 7%, guys. Yeah, I want this to be a good message to you guys. So, the Sisters of Indoja, right? The one thing they're starting to prove to us very much, though, is that people think that they, if they don't have a huge voice or they don't have a uh, big, big, um, uh, you're, you're famous or anything like that, that you won't be heard. Not true. One thing I'm going to say about the Sisters of Indulgence is the fact that they can openly... My Jesus, right? Openly. And you know who cares? Not many people. Not many people. And you know what bothers me the most about it? Is it's just outright. Like, it's so crazy. They, they, they always, certain people... And we all know what this is truly about. But some people truly want to say that, you know, we're the, we're the bullies. We're the one who have been mocking people. Even when um, the LGBT was coming up in this whole drag queen transgender, they were the ones saying that we, we were just ruthless. Just because there were a few Christians who might say you might burn in hell. Let's just, let's call it what it is. I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and lie. Were there Christians coming out and say you're going to burn in hell? Yeah, there were. There were. I'd be lying if I didn't say that. But here's the thing. Just like when they say that we shouldn't uh, take just a small minority of them and just make that the whole truth. Y'all did the same thing to us. It's the whole reason y'all really got to rise. Let's be honest. The whole reason. The, the whole reason that the LGBT and the, I don't really consider these guys part of that but the whole and but they say they are and all that kind of stuff the sense of their perpetual indulgence the reason they got such a rise and the reason they were these things because they took the small minute part of us and said that well look at these guys these guys say we're gonna burn in hell and then they just took off with it and then what and then people just got became cowards and just said you know what we're just not gonna talk about it open your mouth you've got to learn to open your mouth because when you sit back and just let these things happen, this is what we get. And do you think, you think to yourself, how could somebody do this to Jesus? How could somebody do this to God? It's simple. It's very simple. Let's keep going. Let's hear a little bit of the uh, talking points. Matt, before we continue on, let's uh, shout out to Natalie Carey. Let's get us to give her a description. Bam. All right.
I don't know. Um, let me switch to my profile. That way I can comment. Okay, let's get back to it. Hold on. And then shortly after that, in early in the early eighties, AIDS hit. And they thought, you know, we're fucking and people LA house we started here about twenty seven years ago. Okay. Um what do you think about people being upset about you guys mocking the Christian faith? I completely understand why people uh, think that is a first impression. Uh, we absolutely borrow the the nun shape, the nun look. Uh, Not the same. Not from different how many people do on Halloween. First of all, Halloween is it's just, we all know that Halloween is kind of a, uh, can be a very demonic holiday because people do, you're right, people do choose to dress up as nuns and such things that they're not a part of. But people also dress up as a sexy nun, right? People would dress up as a sexy Jesus. People would dress up as a sexy thing of these religious people who give their complete lives to God and make a mockery of it. But that's no, I mean, that doesn't make it right. That's the terrible argument. What did I say? What did I say? I told you. I wasn't trying to make this about the LGBT, but they put their name in there. Okay? And it sucks because we can't see it. Now the lines are so blurred when it comes to the LGBTQ. We have no idea who was who. You got the LGBT fight with the LGBT, which we knew was going to happen eventually. We knew there was going to be somebody who was going to take it too far. Y'all see that? We, um, Go back. Started out with humor. Why don't we use that to start raising money for the charities that are helping people with HIV and AIDS? The government wasn't doing anything, and people were dying. So this weird transformation happened. I oh, okay. I thought that was a kid. How do you say that you are? Let me let me team. Start with white face. People didn't wear the makeup. One person wore it. Thought it was very, very, very theatrical. And then it just became this way that we could create ourselves as queer personae. Grown men, by the way. Outlandish, gay, and flamboyant. Remember I was talking in my last video about how when it comes to gay guys, right, that the one thing that they always try to push is the flamboyant version of a gay person. So a gay person isn't a guy who is gay. No, no, no. It is a guy who is flamboyant, who is into f colors, like shiny colors, pink, hot yellow, hot, hot red, very uh, colorful. That's gay. But I thought it was about sexuality. That used to be the argument. Now it's not. Now it's about, well, really being gay is flamboyant, colorful, fashionable. It's like, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If that was the case, if that was the case, that is what equals gay. 
then what is it this you can how would you know how would you be into colors how could you be into being flamboyant that has to be taught because nobody knows what flamboyant is no kid comes out of their mother's womb being flamboyant especially depending on how they grow up the only way you can learn to be that gay is being flamboyant is if that's taught to you like that uh, flamboyant equals gay right then that really has nothing to do with your sexuality maybe be what if you're just flamboyant and into colors does that make you gay see what i'm saying that's what i was saying about in my other video but anyway too much Two spirit. I've, I've definitely heard of it before. Yeah. Uh, not everyone in, uh, among the indigenous American people subscribes to it, but a fair number do. Um, Can you explain? Sure. It, it, in many um, Native American tribes, and uh, you know, there was this one southwestern tribe. I, I want to say it was the Hopi, but I'm not 100% sure because there are, uh, it, my reading on this and my research on this was some years ago. But they had a ceremony. With two teepees, one filled with Wait a minute. traditional women's work, and one filled with weapons and tools and traditional man's work, and an adult male was asked to choose a teepee to identify their role in society. And if the male Before he continues, so pretty much what he's saying is that Native Americans, because they you know they they, they talk about spirits and stuff and such that because of that Native American people, you're putting them in the same category, WTQ. That's what I'm saying. They just bring everybody in. Black, as long as, pretty much, if you are not white and straight and a male, you are part of the LGBTQ. They're just going to drag you in. If you're a black female, uh, color people. If you're Native American, ind uh, uh, endogenous people. If if you're, if you believe in spirits, like the some of the Native Americans may believe in, you're too-spirited. It's like, why? Wow, that you can y'all can't have everybody. It can't just be white, straight, male. Everybody else is game. Cause I'm never gonna. I don't ever consider myself part of that group. I don't care if I'm colored. I don't consider myself oppressed. I'm not putting myself in that category with y'all. Not putting us in there. And I would hate to be a Native American because I believe in spirits. You know, I was taught that was my culture. I believe in uh, the spirits and stuff like that. That I get pushed into the LGBTQ. And y'all over here having somebody make fun of Jesus. But but but. Wouldn't it be crazy if we got some nuns, right, and started making fun of people and Native Americans? Wouldn't they be jacked up? I'm not trying to pull Native Americans into this, but th that would be weird if we were, like, two-spirited freaks. It's crazy to me. Christian. I want to talk about this. So it talks about um, that because Native, that Native Americans have what they say is <clears throat> genders. So in the Native Native American um, community, there's feminine female, masculine female, feminine female, masculine and female. And most endogenous communities have, and tribes have specific terms for sexual and gender fluid members. I, that's crazy because I met Native Americans. I've never heard them if. Conf 
refer to themselves as a masculine and female, and that is a gender within itself. A masculine and female and a feminine male, that would be considered a gender? Masculine, female. That, that like, you know, masculine being an adjective as it's describing something, that's like me saying black male is a gender because I'm a black male. I, that's just how I see it. You, you're just simply describing a black male, a white male. What would you do for fat male? Is that a gender with it? I'm not making fun of the Native American. I just never heard Native Americans ever explain that ever. When I worked at a place where we talked about Native Americans all the time, we had history books and everything. I ain't never heard them refer to themselves as. It says two spirit was not intended to be interchangeable with LGBT Native American or gay American. It was created in English and then translated into a Ab Bajoy to serve as a pan Indian unifier to be used for general audiences instead of traditional terms in a of language for what are diverse culturally uh, specific ceremonial and social roles that can vary widely. In fact, they say that from non-native gays and lesbian as the term identity of two spirit does not make sense unless it is contextualized with a Native American. So pretty. So what I'm getting out of this is that people who say they're two spirited or saying they're Native American, they're gay. I'm a, I'm a gay person who happens to also be Native American. So you can call me two spirited. They take everything. Uh, it's whatever we say. Because the nun belongs to the Catholic Church. So, no? Okay. There are, Catholic nuns are the, probably the most well known. There are Buddhist nuns, like Pema Chodron. There are Episcopal nuns, like Sister Wendy. There are nuns in many cultures and traditions. And not all religions uh, people have nuns. Certainly in, in my own faith, in Hinduism, we have female swamis. So, so you, you're not saying you're a nun like a Catholic nun. You're saying you're. Okay, but. Wait a minute. Your what is what? Hold on. Go back. You're not Catholic nuns, though. What does that have to do with the Christian? Anyway. Our Jesus. Is Our Jesus. No, but they're not Catholic nuns. I don't see them making. I don't see them making fun of buddha i don't see them making fun of the hinduism i don't see them making fun of any of those people i haven't seen that i haven't seen them making fun of buddha i haven't seen them making fun of other religions as nuns so for them to go and let's just take a step back about what he said she said episcopalian which is just a cousin of catholics pretty much 
And Episcopalians believe in Jesus. Episcopal nuns still believe in Jesus. Episcopalians. So, so he named Buddhist nuns and then Christian nuns and Christian nuns. I want to say, when I'm looking this up, I'm looking up different types of nuns, and only ones I can see is Buddhist nuns and Catholic nuns. I'm not seeing all of these different types of nuns. So why aren't y'all doing any stuff towards Buddha? It just says, there's Christianity, Roman Catholic, Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox, Lutheran, Angelic, and other Christian denominations such as the Episcopalian. It's in the, the only other one it mentions is Buddhist, and I'm looking around here. So, so what is this? Oh, there's so many different types of forms. Why aren't y'all talking about Buddha? Why would you use Mary? Only people who are going to use Mary are Christian nuns, right? So your argument was there's so many different types of nuns. We're representing all of them. But yet y'all are using Jesus and Mary. I don't see Buddha in there. He even said he's Hinduist. He said his religion is Hinduism. So I love it how they, they, they want to pick and choose what they want to be nuns for. They want to say, we're not, we're not going against the Catholic nuns, but, but we also are only targeting Christian nuns, Jesus and Mary. When? Who is doing that now? Who is doing that right now? Who is going around in mass beating up transgender people and people aren't saying a word about it? Because a trans person can almost do anything now and get away. Let's be honest with ourselves. If a trans person right now went and robbed the bank, shot the shot the cashier, and went to jail, we wouldn't hear anything about them being trans. The only thing we would hear is, um, well, you know what it was. It's because uh, society didn't accept them. So they had to go around shooting everybody because we had so many bigots. That, that, that's an excuse for murder. So anybody who struggles in this life has a right to go to a person who's minding their business in their shop and get their head blown off. You know, y'all know a story I want to talk about, but you, I'm not saying that specific case, but y'all know what case I'm talking about where we're not getting any information on what happened. And we're not even going to talk about trends. Let's talk about just gay people in general. If somebody comes out and they're, let's say they are the most lesbian lesbian you've ever heard of, and they shoot, shoot and kill somebody, right? Oh, is anybody going to bring up the fact that they were lesbian? No. Nobody's going to care, right? But you tell me if somebody gets beat up because they're lesbian. Somebody got beat up because they were lesbian. Oh, it's everywhere. So don't, I don't want to hear that we're just beating up LGBT people and we're just getting away with it. And that's the whole reason we mock Jesus. Come on now. And it, okay, first of all, that was not just an LGBT thing. If we're going to, if you, why is she only talking about, anyway, because you do know other religions do do that same stuff. There are religions in this world today that if you're gay in that country with that religion, yeah, you can have your life taken. Why don't you talk about them? Right? But no, it's only about Christians. It's only when it comes to Jesus Christ's name that y'all get so up in a roar. 
But it's, if it's any other God, any other religion, shh. Now, there are people who stand up in those countries and they are met with a harsh faith. I mean, a hard fate, but um, in this whole, oh, let me hear what they just said again. Yeah, being stoned. You know, back in the day, even if we're just gonna go off of that, and you're you're talking about something that happened in the past. So you sound like somebody who says the same thing about, oh, slavery was bad, so let's hate all white people. Okay, that was something in the past. And first of all, stoning somebody because they're gay, you act like y'all they 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 only went after gay people. People got stoned and got the hands chopped off and got beaten for all types of things being broken. Okay, all types of laws. If you stole, there was a chance you might die, okay? If you beat somebody down wrongfully, you might die, all right? <laughs> if you slept with another man's wife, you may die. So this whole concept of just you, if you were only, the uh, only time they stoned people is when they were gay. That's the only time they stoned people. They stoned women. They stoned men. They stoned people. Hey, if you, I wonder if you heard about this, but there was people who were stoned for being Christian, People got stoned for also being Christian, but you're only pointing out the Christians. Christians were not the ones who started stoning people. It was already a thing. And then Christians themselves got stoned to death. So why are you saying it like if only Christians were the only people stoning people when it wasn't people? You do realize there were stonings before Jesus was born, right? Before Jesus was born, okay? Before the Holy Spirit came in. There was no, there, there was stoning. It existed before Jesus. So you acted like it because of Jesus is the reason people stoned people. But they were stoning people before Christ ever came along in, on earth. Well, let's not be goofy. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I want to hear. They want to stone you. Oh, come on. You're, see, that's why you, I can't even give these people a chance. Not not just the LGBT. I'm talking about these people who go to after the extreme. You're talking to those people. Is it happening in mass? Is Matt is a ton of people saying right now there are people at the LA Dodgers who don't like the perpetual the sisters of perpetual indulgence. Were they outside with rocks and bottles ready to bust y'all's head? No. They were out there praying. Praying. Not stoning, not lighting fires, not beating y'all down. They were praying. But yet when we get like somebody like Riley to come out and say something about, uh, I think women should only have women's sports. She gets punched in her face, beat up and locked in a room for three hours. Okay. Yes, I'm giving the same look. Same look. So that you just lost credibility. You pretty much are one of those people because Trump got in at some point. Even though Biden has been a president for years, y'all all take it back to Trump being president and then immediately go, oh, well, well, because of that. Now, I thought it was about the stonings back in the Christian days. Now it's because Trump became in the office. What, now we started to start stoning people? So you're talking about from Christianity. So at some point, we stopped stoning people. And then when Trump came in, we started stoning people again. So why are you bringing up way back then if the stoning didn't start again until Trump? So you're trying to tell me there was a period where nobody was getting stoned. But now, when Trump got elected, people are getting stoned. So what happened in that middle area? Whatever. Ministers and Christian pastors calling for the shooting or death of LGBT people. Where? Where? You could, if you want to no, 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 no. You cannot be that extreme. See, that's what's wrong with people who do that kind of stuff. They get so extreme. Well, there are people calling for the shooting and killings. At who? Oh, well, you got to read the news. No, 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 no. You can't make that big of a statement and not give me at least one source. Tell me who. Tell me who came out and said, let's shoot and kill trans people. I need a person. Okay? You cannot come out and just say, well, I mean, if you just watch the news. Because if I did the same thing in reverse, there are people who love trans people. And then you were to say, where do you see that? Well, if you just watch the news, goofy. 
Yes, who? Exactly. All online. Uh, let me give y'all a little um, honest check right here. I don't know why this camera's cutting off my head, but because I, I don't have it set up to do that. But but they're saying. They're saying that, uh, <clears throat> and I lost my train of thought. We'd like you to do follow up. I could do my research and follow up. Uh, but they are, what I understand is that those who called these people, they're all on, online. Uh, okay, so something about being online. People say the most craziest stuff online. And I think people, y'all need to go out and touch some grass. Shout out to Brett Cooper, man. But be, really, y'all need to go outside and just look at the flowers and look at the sun, feel the trees. Man, because y'all get so caught up on these Twitter people. Y'all really think that's real life. People will come on Twitter. People come to me. People come on my... I'm a black man. You don't think people make fun of me for being a black man? People make fun of Brett Cooper. You don't think they make fun of her for being Brett Cooper and being a white woman? You don't think people make fun of this woman right here? You don't think they make fun of her? We all get clowned, okay? Every one of us, okay? Somebody's gonna... And people, some people aren't even clowning. Some people will downright evil... People will tell me die N word. Some people's gonna say you die, you F word. And somebody's gonna tell this lady, you die, you woman hater. It's all part of it, man. Being online should not be the standard. This is really bothering me. I don't know why this anyway. And if you'd like me to do follow up, I could do my research and follow up. Uh, but they are what I understand is that those who called for were either politicians or they were evangelical, far right evangelical people. Who? There we go. And there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, there we go. That's what I wanted to hear. Anecdotal. Christianity is ingrained, natural, and beautiful. It leads him to be compassionate and loving and to seek out things he doesn't understand and research and talk to people. But do you realize that when you do the hunting Jesus, you are putting that Jesus on the cross and making a mockery of it? You realize that? Right. What? Oh my God! You're just you. Not the name of Jesus. They're using Jesus's words, and not to mock you or hurt you. What to say? This is right. This is wrong. They use the name. They use the Bible. They use the whole thing. How come every time she tries to speak, how did I catch that perfectly? I gotta, I gotta have to, uh, <laughs> no, I'm not going to use that, but that just happened. To... <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, can I get somebody out of the, all right. So let me go back. Why is it every time this woman speaks, this, this, this person feels like they have to interrupt. She's at least letting you get a whole conversation out. Every time she speaks, he's, how about, how about, how about, hey, hey, whoa. Can you let the woman speak? I mean, dang, can she have an opinion? You act like yours is the only one that matters. Can can she speak? Dang. Look, talking the whole time. You won't even let her get a word in. Oh my goodness. People who say that kind of stuff. I got bullied in high school when you were a kid. Grow up. Get some therapy. See, these are the people who didn't go to therapy or something, man. Or they didn't learn to deal with it. Talk to people. Have mentors in your life. Go talk to people. But you look like a, a man who's at least in their late 30s, if not 40s. You're talking about something that happened 20 years ago? You're still worried about getting bullied in high school? I got bullied in high school. Maybe she got bullied in high school. We move on. And, but that's your only excuse to mock Jesus is, well, the reason we do this kind of stuff is because they use Jesus. And I remember when I got bullied in high school. And it, she's better than me because I'm not going to say that. I'm not even going to be like, you were bullied in high school. I, I, at some point, I would be like, hey, look, 
that was high school. Are you not over that yet? I mean, why do you feel like you have to hold on to your high school years when you when kids were kids? And this is another thing. We put so much um, stock in kids because somebody who was 15 years old called you the F word. Right. Somebody who is 15 year old made fun of you because you were gay. That 15 year old holds all the power in your life as a child. If a 15 year old was to call you something today, would you be like, well, if he said that at 15 years old, it must be true. I have to believe it. I must take it to my grave. He called me a black monkey. So I've got to now realize I'm hurt. And man, any white person I see now, they get, I mean, I got to put them down because a white 15 year old boy called me a black monkey. No, <laughs> I would laugh and be like, this is a kid. I mean, I don't expect kids to be any smart. I don't, I don't expect them to put things together. Somebody who says that they're just being a kid, being goofy, but you see it as so hurtful because it was so traumatizing to you. But that's what if it's that bad, you can't let go. If you feel like that is ruling your life, get therapy. That doesn't make it right, Goofy. At all. This is a straight up interview. It's a question. It's a real interview. You see, that's the kind of trash we don't like. Because it's because any time, hold on, put the camera on me. Because any time we try to have that conversation with y'all, that's what it gets told. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought that I was going to be able to say whatever I want to say and there wasn't going to be no backlash. Why can't y'all just do some talking? Sometimes people are allowed to talk, give you an interview and have an opinion. But because you're against that, I have to just bow down. I have to give you an interview and let you say whatever you want to. And I can't even have a, any kind of I can't even give a rebuttal. Well, that's not an interview. Even the most greatest interviews I've ever seen and you've seen. Do they not get they do not at least ask a question? Do they not go, well, don't you feel that, you know, what you're doing would be disrespectful to certain people? Because if I was let's say I'm on the other side. I'm the Catholic here and a, and a person of the sisters of indulgence is interviewing me. If I was to come out and say, well, I believe, you know, the sister of indulgence, I just believe they're making a mockery of Jesus. And then the sisters of indulgence person said, that's not what we're trying to do. And then my response would be, whoa, 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 whoa. I thought this interview was straight up. I, I thought that we were having, I, you didn't say that you were going to be giving your opinion. I thought that when we had this interview, I was going to tell you about my Catholic faith. I was going to tell you about Jesus and you weren't going to do no talking. Y'all sound like cowards when y'all do that. I just want to throw that out there. When you're not willing to have a conversation, the only way you're willing to have a conversation is if somebody just bows down and kisses your feet. That's cowardness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Y'all can't see. Oh, I like that. First of all, why did you do this? I've got You don't think it hates speech to make a mockery of God being murdered on the cross? She got him. First of all, why did you do this gotcha interview when you told me that this was going to be straight up? You are I didn't tell you from the beginning. I just asked if I could interview and also it's a fair question. Is it not a fair question? You got me that's fair. Was that not a fair question? I have an answer for your question. I'm healing people who are You see, you're picking a certain amount of people. You're picking somebody who said to you one day, you're going to go to hell. 
You're picking that 1% of people who may do that. Evil people who may tell you you're going to hell. There are people who do that. But every place you go in this life, not everybody is what they seem. Somebody may call themselves Christians, but they're truly not because they truly just hate you. There are some people who, let's be honest, there's some people who are racist, right? But they're really not racist. They're just an evil person. They just choose to use racism as an outlet. They don't really care if you're black, white, orange, green. They're just going to pick something so they can they can be evil. They'll be like, oh, I slapped him because he was black. That person would have slapped anybody, but it's easier to say because he was black. I'm, there are people who say that they're, there are people who say they're LGBT, right? The people who say they're LGBT and then they start touching kids, right? Would you, would you, are we supposed to break down the LGBT and say, well, there's people, there's some of y'all that touch kids. So I'm assuming every one of y'all touch kids. So anytime I get a chance to talk about the LGBT, trust me, I'm going to be as hateful as possible. And I'm going to make a joke of y'all. I'm going to laugh at y'all. And if I see one of y'all on the streets, you see what that sounds like? It's the same argument the LGBT uses against us and says that, well, you're picking the people who like kids and call us all bad. You're picking the, the small percent of Christians who call themselves Christians and then say you're going to hell and then and then say, well, we got to attack all y'all now. Your argument is getting blown up in your face. It's a lie. Shoot. You would not, and I appreciate you're not being a book. But I am using satire, humor, the same way that people do with Halloween costumes, the same way that you see on Betty Hill and on television. That's that's that. So he he had a chance there to really defend himself, and he blew it up by saying, "I'm doing the same thing people do on Halloween." No, that was not a good. That was not a good rebuttal. She asked you. Why do you not think it's hate speech that they're putting you're making fun of Jesus on the cross? And your argument pretty much became because they hate us. They shoot us. They beat us. I'm pretty much doing what people do on Halloween. What? It's okay because they hurt me. So you're saying I can hurt them. I can mock them because they mock me. Thank you. That is such <laughs> You're using satire You cannot take a religious figure Jesus Something a lot of the world at least knows of And a lot of people believe in And put their entire faith in And then use him On the cross dancing with a Gay man or having him Have sex with a woman And mocking him and then say That's satire You're missing the point You can't, you can't do all that Yeah, what do you mean? And then they're telling us, well, if everybody's telling you that that is a disgrace and insulting, why can't you at least just listen? Do you have to be so stubborn to be like, well, I know people are saying that it's bad and I know Christians are getting made fun of and they find it disrespectful and disgusting, but... She, she's giving you an interview and she's giving you the floor. She, as a Christian, is right in front of your face. So why can't you assume Christians are like her? No, you only go for the, the percent of people who say they're Christian and have been mean to you at some point in your life. Therapy. Therapy. The argument is just going in circles now. That's a circle argument. That's all they're going to keep doing. How dare you shame us? How dare you shame us in our own pride festival, madam? We're in public, one. We're on a public street. Pride, yes. In, in the middle of what's called the democracy, when we should all be celebrating. We can be all different. And you can tell I'm angry. We should be able to talk about our Why are you angry about me saying, look, I'm a Christian? When you put someone mimicking Jesus on a cross and pole dancing, that's offensive to me. That is deeply offensive. Why? Why does is that wrong to you for me to say that? I'm, I'm not shooting you. I'm not doing anything to you. I am saying with sincerity in my heart, that is my God, and you are mocking him. That's why is that okay? Why do you think that's okay? I have given you the 
answer and you repeat the same statement, then it's accusatory. It sounds to me like you don't want to hear my words. You defend it. You say, they mocked us. Well, who are doing that which you say was wrong for them to do in the first place? So how are you any better? I got your logic there. Can you repeat that? How are you any better? Let's say, they made a mockery of us, so we're going to make a mockery of them. How is that okay? That's your words, and it is incorrect. We're not making a mockery of them. Satire is not making a mockery of someone to offend those people. That's offensive. But I'm telling you, as a Christian, that's how it is interpreted because that's what it is. You can sit here all day and say, that's not what we're doing, that's not what we're doing, but that is what you're doing. It seems to me, as a Christian, you've gone out of your way to immerse yourself in gay imagery and gay culture, deceiving me so that you can be offended. This happens in Dolores Park in San Francisco. So you don't film it. So Christians come to the park and they film it, and then they go, oh, look, a full person who doesn't... You think I'm speaking this out to be offended. Do you, you think I'm speaking this out to be offended? It's everywhere. You guys push it everywhere. So I don't have to seek it out. Trust me, I don't have to seek it out. Culture is a sweeping generalization that's really not fair. One in a debate like this, you have to be specific. Okay, Anita, Target, Bud Light, your face. But do you want me to go on? It's everywhere. I can't. It, they light up the water tower. They light up the water tower where I live in rainbow colors for the entire month of June. And you're saying you seek it out. I don't seek it out. Trust me, I don't seek it out. You, someone does because someone has gone to the Lewis Park. And filmed the Hunky Jesus concert. Someone's making a lot of money off of your guys' cause. Okay, so seeking it out. <clears throat> I mean, I guess when it comes to, yeah, the LGBT, it's hard. It, you can't, you don't have to seek it out. Um, it is really in your face. And this is something I also wanted to say, kind of like when it comes to the WNBA, because I was watching a video on that earlier. When it comes to the WNBA, um, I understand that the NBA also does the same thing when they try to be woke about everything. That what makes it also sometimes hard to just like going to Target, just like um, dealing with Bud Light. It's like when you try to be part of the WNBA, at least last year, I don't I haven't watched it this year, but last year, man, it was so hard to enjoy the WNBA because every time I turned on or looked around, looked at the news of anything they with WNBA, every time I went to their page, it was something about being gay or lesbian. It's like, okay, I get it. Did this help? And it's, I thought we were here to watch basketball, but every chance y'all get, y'all throw LGBT in my face. You change your logos. You make an ad about it. You talk about it. It's just like, man, can we just watch basketball? You know what I mean? And I understand people. That's, I'm not saying shut up and dribble, but I'm saying that there's certain things that you're not even involved with that has really nothing to do with y'all. But y'all feel like y'all have to go out of y'all's way to every chance y'all get to do that. But y'all don't do that for anything else. I don't see anybody go out of the way to be like, oh, you know what? Jesus, Jesus, let's do that Jesus night. I don't even see religious nights at all. It's just pure, pure LGBT. If LGBT is the only thing in the world out, I don't even know anything. I can't think of anything else that gets pushed more than LGBT on in anywhere. I can't think of any case, any cause, except for LGBT and Black Lives Matter. Those are the only two things I've ever seen get pushed harder than anything ever. Like, it's like you can't think about anything else i don't see anything that has that much power over our ads over our kids over our stores it's ridiculous she killed it she killed it with the roll of the eyes come on girl <laughs> But I understand. I mean, it's hard not to show emotions. Similarities and how we come together. That's where our all this should be. Well, that's 
Speaking of the Catholic Church, the, the bishops, what the heck are y'all doing? Y'all aren't talking up, speaking up, talking about it, nothing. All the lay people are doing all the work. This is what I said the other day. I don't feel like the Catholic Church has came out and said enough. I'm Catholic. That that kind of hurts me. Well, thank you for the, the Catholic needs to repent. They're trying to have a conversation, um, which is allowed. But they're not saying the Catholic Church as a whole. I don't think Pope is coming down in the whole church. I think they're going to a Catholic church, one of them, and having a conversation. I don't think it's... You think the whole entire Catholic church as a whole, which is far bigger than the Sisters of Indulgence... Do you think we're going to have a whole conversation about let's see what our similarities are? There ain't no similarities to talk about. I don't even know if I believe what they said because I haven't seen anything reported on that. When I see it and hear it, then we'll have a conversation. But as far as I've seen the Catholics that have come out and the bishops that some of them haven't come out, but some of the one of the bigger bishops have come out and said, this is disgusting. So I don't see a bishop coming out and saying this is wrong. And then the rest of the Catholic Church being like, yeah, let's have a conversation with them. If that was the case, the L.A. Dodgers would not have all those people out there praying and stuff. And a lot of the L.A. Dodger fans are Catholic. Thank you for I'm going to actually comment on that part. Members of the Catholic Church. She did not say the Catholic Church. Okay, she did say that church. I support you in your endeavor to tell the Catholic Church to repent. No, see, that got mixed up. Not the Catholic Church. Well, thank you for the tribute. Thank you for the Okay, well, let me, let me, I'm going to comment on that part. Well, let's see. Well, they got enough comments. All right. I don't even know what y'all think. Um, I'm sorry, I made this a super long video, but it was really on my mind. And uh, it's kind of crazy to even think about. So let me know what y'all think. Put your comment down below if you even saw this video. I doubt you made it this far to the end, but if you did, hey, awesome. And I'll catch y'all later.